Hello. Um, please welcome Arne Solberg. He's a professor of computer science at uh, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim. Um, he also brings with him his wife, Ingeborg, who is also a professor of computer science at the same place. Um, she works on uh, digital libraries and information resource management, so if you have any questions about that, you can catch her later. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Solberg has some very interesting things to tell us about things he's been doing with Wi-Fi in the city of Trondheim, so please welcome him. Thank you. <coughs> Hi. Uh, we've been very, very interested in getting in contact with you guys at Google's after we saw all of the nice writings in the newspapers about the Wi-Fi net in Mountain View, not to speak of San Francisco. And it's very hard to, to get anything out of the newspapers because uh, they are short pieces, you know, and, uh, and uh, so we, we are very curious, have been very curious to see what, uh, what uh, the technicalities are what you're really doing. Uh, and uh, because we are trying to do things in Trondheim, and we are trying then to, to put a, a, a wireless network in place, a wireless broadband in place in the city, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that now, and, and also to, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the sort of, uh, should I say, political questions that, uh, that naturally will arise because this is a new, this is new stuff. And, and uh, I think everybody are a little bit uncertain about what we, the future will bring on this. We see that uh, the telecoms, for example, uh, react in, in, in uh, interesting ways sometimes. Uh, and uh, so on. Uh, l l let me place ourselves on the map and, uh, and so on by a couple of, uh, a few pictures first. Uh, Trondheim, as you, oops, can I have this work? Yeah, is in Scandinavia. It's on the Norwegian coast. Uh, it's 63 degrees north. Uh, so uh, while I think uh, Fairbanks is, Anchorage is, Fairbanks I think is 60. Or is it Anchorage? Uh, it's a great place, and, uh, and I'll show you some pictures. Uh, the, uh, let, let me first say then that the re I mean, one of the reasons I came up here now is that uh, my wife and I spend a sabbatical with UCLA, the, the, with the Department of Computer Science there, so we are there for the spring. So it's very convenient then to, to be up here. So this is Trondheim, and here is the main building of the university. Uh, why is not this working? Yeah. As seen from downtown. Downtown in Norwegian is called Midtown or Midbyen, where by is the Norwegian term for town, so it's middle town. Uh, there is a river going through, and we have some high-rise buildings here. And the next picture then shows you the, the uh, one of our two main campuses, uh, as seen from the opposite side. So this is the main building again, and uh, we got the, we got uh, campus buildings here. And Midtown is basically the area down here. See, and a little bit out here. So Midtown, as we define it, is around uh, half a square mile. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the Faculty of, of Information Technology, Mathematics, and Electrical Engineering, where I'm serving as a dean now, uh, is situated here. And we also got one of the high-rise buildings here. The town looks something like this. You see, what I just showed you, I mean, the picture, I mean, uh, where the main building and the university campus is out up here. Uh, then the picture that I showed you 
covered most of Midtown, which is here, which is around, as I said, half a square mile. Uh, then we, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have the campus of the Technic University, which is here. We have student dorms, mm -hmm. which are here and here. And we have a campus for the humanities, which is up here. Uh, we have marine technology, which is here. Uh, and uh, we have some other facilities, some other buildings uh, around here. The distance from the humanities and social science campus down to Midtown is around four miles. It's six kilometers uh, on route. There is a bus, a public bus going here where the yellow stuff is. Uh, and it takes around 20 minutes then uh, from, from downtown and, and over here. I mean, if uh, traffic is not too heavy and traffic is never heavy. Uh, we plan then to, to, to uh, build wireless network then along this route here to cover downtown. And there are also a, a lot of students living in the area here. And we are also negotiating then to have, uh, to have uh, sort of extended the, the, uh, the stuff, the net over there. Uh, we know that there is, uh, there is no real solution yet for vehicles in motion. There is the Vibro experiment in, uh, or pilot in South Korea, uh, but, but uh, it's not sort of ready to take. So there is, uh, we, we, are, we are planning then to do this, but, uh, but it's not in the first, uh, I mean, the first thing that we'll be doing. There is another, the green stuff here, it, uh, uh, reflects plans then to to uh, implement an instrumented road. I mean, an IT instrumented road for experimental purposes. Uh, but, but that will be, uh, so, so, so that, that'll be a little bit more advanced than, than, uh, than uh, the bus stuff that we, we uh, otherwise would, would, uh, would plan to do in a sort of more rough, uh, rough, rough start. Okay, so uh, uh, let, let's, uh, let's, um, uh, and say that what we have now is plans then for wireless broadband in downtown Trondheim. That's approximately half a square mile of outdoor, outdoor area. We want that to be integrated with the uh, wireless broadband of the campus or of, of the campuses. The campuses all together are around two square miles outdoor and, uh, and uh, five million square feet indoor areas. Uh, I, I hope it's five million. It's, half a million or 400,000 square meters, which I think will translate to, to uh, 5 million square feet. Uh, we have around a quarter of that uh, covered already with, uh, with Wi-Fi, and the goal is 100% Wi-Fi. So we may view the downtown outdoor net as a technical extension of the campus net. The long-term objectives that we, we have and that everybody should have, would then be broadband for all, which would mean 30 to 50 megabit per second, access everywhere. Uh, the constraint, of course, as we know, is that radio frequencies are scarce, uh, which means that we have to, be, to, uh, to base the Wi-Fi net on, uh, on a wide backbone. Uh, and we are sort of in our thinking, thinking that uh, that uh, the wireless part would, would only sort of take the maximal, uh, with current technology, 50 to 100 meters out to, to the user from the access point on the, on the uh, wide backbone. Of course, if traffic is not too heavy, then, then one can also sort of substitute the wide backbone with, with the radio frequency uh, uh, communication, but, but if the load sort of, of gets up, then that's not possible. So we need a lot of access points with the current technology. So question now is why now? And this is a sort of printout of the traffic statistics of, uh, of uh, the campus uh, and shows then how the, uh, how the um, uh, volume of wireless 
internet traffic has increased and from uh, from uh, uh, 204 to 205 so it's approximately doubled and it's going to double now also next year so students are sitting everywhere and with uh, with uh, their laptops and and using the facilities that we got already so this coming is coming very fast uh, we also know that the uh, the uh, development and of of, uh, of uh, this the small stuff i mean the the uh, smartphones everything is going very fast and and uh, so that's the way that's the way things are uh, we just have to do this and we have to do it fast and uh, and uh, uh, things will change very, very fast in the next years to come. Uh, of course, we have to realize this in several steps with different technologies. Uh, so we are using, like uh, I suppose most people would do now, uh, the 80211 technology, unlicensed frequency, garbage ban, uh, because users already have Wi-Fi compatible devices. This is what the way we can, can reach the users. The complementation and replacement of new technologies, for example, WiMAX, uh, 480216 technology, or others will, of course, be, be, uh, be done uh, as they become available and as, they be, as, uh, as the, the user's equipment then will be able to take it. Uh, this is downtown and from I don't know if it's Google Earth, but but uh, uh, and and so downtown here, uh, the river here, and student dwelling dwellings up here, or student dwellings they have bought apartments and, and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty full of of uh, twenty year olds, very few two year olds, and even fewer uh, sixty year olds. Uh, so this is the situation, and uh, to what this what we do then is to sort of, of course build in then with uh, with uh, a couple of hundred a couple of hundred uh, access points in in this. Uh, I may, for those of you, of you interested in history, uh, this place here is. Uh, the harbor from which Leif Eriksson uh, started out his journey then to, to discover, discover Newfoundland and America. Uh, he had spent the winter in Trondheim with relatives and uh, in, the summer of, uh, in the summer then he set out to, to go back to Greenland. He stopped then for, for a couple of days in Iceland. Uh, and then came out into this terrible storm, which brought him then to Newfoundland. I mean, just for <laughs> a digression, of course. But uh, the next stage here yeah, would uh, will go something like this: that uh, uh, we would extend then with the with the technology available then, the WiMAX, Wibro. Uh, all of you are familiar with Wibro. No. Okay. Wibro is a South Korean pilot, which they set up then for, for, uh, for mobile, uh, mobile situations, so for, for cars or, or, or autos then to, uh, to, to, uh, to be able to take broadband. It's, uh, it's in a limbo right now, uh, I heard. Uh, uh, and the reason is that they got into quarrel with, uh, with uh, the state's owned uh, and controlled uh, television company. In order to have economy in in the Vibro, then they, they have to offer downloading of television uh, to be able then to 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 charge for that. And and uh, the state-owned television company sort of uh, exerts their right then to my, my monopoly on all television. So it'll take a year or two, I think, then to to work this out. Uh, most of the uh, and there is also CDMA, which is another another technology. Uh, and UMTS, which you know, of course, and, and most of the city now is covered by UMTS. Uh, so, so, uh, so we already have a sort of half megabit, uh, megabit uh, coverage of, uh, of a lot of the city. 
you, you see in the country there is a very, very high penetration of, uh, of ADSL, of broadband. Uh, I would guess that, that 60, 70, 80 percent of all homes then have, uh, have uh, wired broadband in their homes. Uh, most of, of the kids are, uh, are going around with cell phones. Uh, if you go into a fifth grade, I, I would guess that 90% of the kids have a cell phone. And uh, people are sort of giving their, their, their kids cell phones in order then to, I mean, they feel secure in, 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 uh, in a way. So, so it's a very, very broad and deep penetration of the technology already among the, the population in general. Okay, so, so this will be the next stages, and, uh, and uh, of course what we try to do then, uh, the challenge is then to have a seamless roaming with session mobility. Uh, what does this cost? Seems to us that uh, the outdoor investment is approximately uh, 1 million US dollars per square mile. It's a little, maybe 1.2 million, uh, something like that, per square mile. Uh, the indoor investment is approximately 10 times as much. Uh, annual operation and maintenance, the way we, we uh, look at this, will be around 50% of the, uh, of the uh, investment cost. If we now look at Trondheim, which has around 250 square miles and 170,000 persons, we see that this translates then if everybody apply from, uh, if everybody pay from, uh, from uh, babies of, of six months, uh, until the, the old ones, then, uh, then uh, it'll be $60 per month. And of course, this is impossible. I mean, it's, it's way too much. Maybe in Mountain View, it will be okay because you have got uh, 70,000 or something like that in a couple of square miles, I suppose. Uh, and, and this will then translate to something which is, is achievable and, and uh, okay. With us, it doesn't. So, of course, we have to have a mixture of technologies which uh, brings down the, the price. Uh, and we also tend to believe that in order to, to have this to really take off, we, there is, a, there is a, an, uh, an urgent need for, uh, for new network research, pretty much then on the radio technology uh, level, and to, to, uh, to be able then to, to use the frequency bands that we have in a much more effective way. But, but of course, this is a sort of five, six, seven year yeah, stuff that we are talking about. Now, what, what do we want, where, where do we want to go with this? We want to contribute to the future of Norwegian trade and industry with cutting edge expertise, expertise in wireless service and products. That's obvious. We would like then to try to create a world class incubated laboratory for research and development in wireless technologies, products and services. And we would like to make Trondheim and NTNU more attractive to students and technology based business. Uh, so, so the last one here is very important to us because we suffer, as all of the rest of the world, uh, uh, from the effects then of the dot-com collapse, where the young ones are not that interested in, in uh, they don't dare to go into IT in, in the way that they did before. We have to turn this around in, in, in some way. And this is one of, of, uh, of the things that we are trying to do. Uh, what is unique with what we are doing, because we, of course, we, have, we know that there are many efforts. We just now saw that there is, an, is a new effort and in the city of London, where they, they also go out for, for one square mile of, uh, of wireless broadband. Uh, we try then to, to come up with uh, a duality between R&D and commercial utilization. We want to have a stable network running on, on state-of-the-art technology. And so that we can implement commercial services on that and experiment with that. And uh, we, we want also to have a platform for R&D and new products. So what we are doing then is to, to when we are setting up, uh, what do you call it, the brankets, uh, I mean, where we put the access points up in the light poles. Huh? Brax, I don't know the, the English word you see, Brax. I mean, okay, we are making room for, for, for parallel networks. Okay, so that, uh, that uh, people who come in with a, with a great network idea, with great new, uh, new uh, stuff, uh, okay, come, put it up, make it available, uh, make it available for, for, for the people around, and, uh, and uh, if they want to chance 
take a chance in using it without having, uh, without being guaranteed a, a sort of level of support that they'll have in state of the art, then fine. Uh, so so we, we make provision then for three experimental networks in, uh, in, uh, to, to, in parallel with the other stuff. Uh, we will build a service platform on the, uh, on the normal, uh, sort of the guaranteed state-of-the-art uh, technology uh, with mobility, positioning of users, and security. I mean, we know, of course, that, uh, that uh, we can pinpoint the users uh, to within uh, five meters or something like that with this technology, and uh, if they are willing then to be pinpointed, uh, uh, and they have to have a say, of course, then, then uh, we can provide them uh, the positioning uh, information system for, which takes, takes advantage of, of localization. Security is, of course, a big problem. And, and, uh, the target groups, nomadic and mobile users, we want to provide outdoor coverage at, and indoors at malls and cafes. So, so uh, uh, we... Uh, the intention then is to, to have a seamless net which is sort of going from inside the buildings and out and, uh, and everything hanging together. When we can achieve that is another question, of course. So we, but we're already talking to mall owners uh, in downtown where, where, who are interested then in having their malls covered in the seamless network with the outdoor areas. So, so, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we do not intend to compete with XDSL uh, or with DSL, ADSL is called with us, and whatever comes, and cable. Uh, I mean, this is not our intention. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether the other guys believe in that, uh, but, but uh, it is not our intention. Uh, we start out with, uh, with uh, the customers that we see, the Tigers now, uh, our uh, R&D companies who want them to, to do experiments, and also big users, like our university. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, around 20,000 students. In the other colleges uh, in town, uh, there is another 10,000, so altogether there is a sort of student population of 30,000. Uh, in uh, our faculty for information technology, Electrical engineering, there, there we have around two and a half thousand uh, master's students, 500 a year on a five year program. We have, uh, we have uh, 250, 400 PhD students, and of course, so altogether 3,000, something like that. And of course, these are then early adapters, they are, they are uh, people that we would have then to, to recruit them for. for uh, Okay, so the next would, and we will give this for free to them. The next would be service developers. We would like them to, to develop new services and, and have companies in to do that. And then private individuals and businesses. So the applications, research and development, business model, user patterns, services, production, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are very interested then in paving the way then for doing research on, on services, on information services. Uh, yeah, those will be standard services like everybody would do, location-based services, uh, mobile services, nomadic services, and of course in this there would be then the opportunity then to do new things. Uh, we have some planned uh, e-learning projects. We have a number of projects that we, then, that, that we are now trying then to, uh, to sort of get underway. Uh, we try to develop uh, cooperative projects then with the city, uh, the county. Uh, one is then for trying to use the city as a digital learning arena, uh, cooperation with the elementary school district. Uh, we also developed in cooperation with local high schools and our school of education. Uh, we develop, try to develop a context independent information system for the new students when they, uh, when they arrive then in the autumn and, and, and so on and, and, and so forth. So this is just one of, of, of the strands. Now, the, the open questions, 
are coming here now. And, and that is, which services will people pay for? I mean, with the high penetration that we already got then in, uh, in, uh, in the broadband, uh, in the homes, then, then for people then to pay, pay something extra for, for, uh, for having this, mo this wireless downtown, there must, be, there must be some extra services which makes it worthwhile. And I think this is uh, because we, we do not have the situation that uh, the, that you have, for example, in New Orleans, New Orleans and, uh, and Philadelphia, and so on, where where you try to where they try then to build a wireless network, which will reach into people's homes from the outside. We 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 we, we have the other situation where we have broadband network in people's homes, and we want to use that to reach to. To, to the exterior of the building. So, so which kind of services will, will people pay for? Well, we don't know. Uh, certainly there must be something which, which, uh, which makes it worthwhile then for, for mobile and, uh, and uh, nomadic employees. Uh, which kind of ICT products uh, would we have? We know that we will have to build up a, a help desk for the population. Uh, I mean, because we know the trouble that we get into when we get uh, uh, when we take our own laptop and, uh, and try then to uh, to uh, sort of go into the wireless network in uh, in a motel here or there uh, is not easy, and uh, and uh, so we are planning then to build up a help desk then based on students and uh, starting this summer and serving the population then for for at least a year or so. Uh, which kind of business model uh, can we build up? How can we get in money enough then to be able to, to sustain this? And uh, we also have to, to look at that. What we are planning to do now is to offer everything for free for the first year. Uh, what about citizens' privacy protection? We know all, all, uh, uh, all of these problems. Who owns the Wi-Fi broadband networks? Uh, we know that the telecoms owns the wire networks, but the property owners owns the buildings networks. In my home, I, uh, I mean, the responsibility of, uh, of, uh, of the telecom operator stops at the wall. They will not take any responsibility for what is inside the house. Then I have to start to ask them if they will come and fix things up, and I have to pay them which, of course, means that they say, this is not our property. So it's my property. So who owns, then, uh, the air above my garden, above my house? Is it me? When my wireless uh, access point is sort of, of radiating out uh, possibilities, then, to my neighbors, then, to, to, uh, to attach themselves? Is that my property. Uh, we are getting into a, a sort of discussion of ownership here, which uh, I believe will, will, will uh, bring about new, uh, new re uh, regulatory regimes. And, and uh, we don't know really what they are going to be. So, so uh, when we start and, and, and uh, it's, it's sort of, of uh, developing this, uh, I believe that we, 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 we are defining new competition areas, uh, arenas. Because what, what, what we, be, I mean, the way we have had it until now with the telecoms has been that the telecoms, they have tried in a way then to be vertically integrated, to control everything from the copper in the ground to the services on top, and then they make possibilities then for, service, for, for people coming in with the content services than to make a deal then with those who own the copper. I, I, I think, to, I mean, it is, I don't believe that this is a, is a, sustainable, a sustainable model. I mean, not with, with, uh, with uh, players like Google and, and, uh, and Skype and, and others then in, uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, on in the game. So, so, but which kind of model would we have then? I, I, I would certainly like them to see 
uh, a kind of horizontal organization with service provision in value chains and, and then with, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with the definition of new competition arenas uh, for the different kinds of services. Uh, and then which net, new network technology will be, will be had. The way we organize the project then is that we have an, infra, an infrastructure project and we have a net laboratory project and an information service development project. The infrastructure project is, uh, I call then, uh, Turnham Wi-Fi Broadband Commons. Uh, the concept of commons is known. Okay, so, so, and I think the concept of commons sort of, uh, of in some way says that, uh, that uh, the air above us in the streets and so on is the public's ownership. The public, I mean, the population owns this. So it's, it's in, 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 in a way a common a commons area. And so we start out with that philosophy in, uh, in, uh, in the bottom. Uh, the owners here will be NTNU, the University, the City of Trondheim, the County, and the Chamber of Commerce. So we are organizing uh, those, and they, are, they come in with a quarter of uh, the money, the necessary money each. We have a net laboratory, which we are about to start, and, uh, and uh, we will own that in cooperation with the industry, but then inviting in whoever wants to come in and, uh, and uh, rent a uh, part of the, of the bracks, bracks, brackets, okay. Uh, we are setting up also then for information service development uh, projects then where we, uh, we uh, are talking then to companies like Accenture and, uh, and so on to, to come in and, uh, and uh, do whatever they feel like, like doing. Uh, the success criteria, we believe, is the early mobilization of many uses. The early mobilization of many uses. And we come up then with the first priority uh, will be then the 30,000 students that we got because they are the easiest to mobilize. Second priority will be the elderly, those over of an age of more than 27 years. Uh, and, uh, uh, but the younger ones first. The younger ones first. So we are also then trying to, to, to make this to cover the, the high schools and junior highs then in, uh, in the area that we cover. Trying to involve the kids then in, in, uh, in doing things, doing projects based on this, and so on and so forth. If we succeed, okay, we don't know, but uh, again, this, I believe, is, 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 is very, very important in, in order for us to have success. Uh, we also believe that uh, we would have to, to develop new information services adapted to mobility. Homo mobilis, I mean, I don't have a, have a sort of classical <laughs> background in Greek and Latin, but uh, I mean, homo mobilis. Uh, and we need to have new network technology for lower costs. It's too expensive the way it is now. We will never succeed unless we, we, uh, we uh, get the cost down. And we need to make students and grown-ups have lots of fun with the new technology. If we can't sort of achieve that, then we will not be successful. The progress plan is my last slide. We, uh, we take the lower part of the river, and the lower part of the river is, this is Leif Eriksson's start point. Uh, this is an old shipyard which has been converted to, uh, to uh, restaurants and, uh, and stuff. Uh, this is a sort of part of the, uh, of the uh, small boat harbor in the river. And so we are, we are, we are taking out this now and this will, uh, for, for a small pilot to see then, I mean, what are, what are the noise ratios? Uh, 
I mean, of course, this is the garbage band, and, and there will be noise and so on, and have, uh, uh, if we can have it to work or not. So this pilot is, uh, is uh, today is Monday, and it is due then on Friday. Uh, I mean, to, to, to work. So I'm going home to uh, Norway, to Trondheim on Thursday, arriving uh, Friday, 2nd March, and I'm going to inspect it then on, uh, on the 6th of March, 7th of March. So I hope then that that will work. Uh, the next one is 15th of August, uh, when the new semester starts and the new students are coming. Uh, so we, we, we try then to have Mitbyen then as an extension of, of, uh, of the campus network. Uh, when, then with 200 access points down in Mitbyen and, uh, and to have this work then. And then we just cross our fingers and then hope that, uh, that uh, things will work out. And again, this is the university's logo, the city's logo, the county's logo, and the logo of the Chamber of Commerce, which go together then for the infrastructure. And we invite then everybody then to come in and join in if they feel that they would be part of the fund. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any remarks? Yep. So, um, so it sounds like you're pretty close to deployment. So, how are you controlling access? Is it just open, wide open access points, or you know, capture, or what? No, what? What we are going to do is to to have uh, the large users. Uh, behave like their own ISPs. So the university will uh, will serve as an ISP for for the students and the employees at the, at the university. We'll use a VPN uh, VPN uh, type of channel uh, so that everybody who wants to go into this have to have some some uh, deal. I mean, either with a normal ISP. Of which there were ISP, uh, uh, of which I think there were three or four or five active ones in in the city, or they have to to uh, uh, have a VPN connection to their their employer. The, the, so we are going to do it that way. Also because we, we we need to be very careful not to to start a head-on competition with, uh, with uh, those who make a living out of selling internet services the way it is. So this is the way we're going to do it. Yeah. Have you considered at any point in your studies giving uh, like actually employing people's inhabitants of Trondheim's access points at home as part of the mesh? Yes, we have. Uh, that was the first idea that we started out with uh, half a year ago, or nine months ago, uh, to, to try to create a, a sort of commons based then on the goodwill of the people. Uh, after having uh, having sort of pondered a little bit uh, with with this and looked at the organizational complexities, uh, we gave it up. Just because of organizational because of organization complexity and uh, and uh, uh, well, there are some legal complications also maybe because. Uh, we also recently got a law which is saying that it's a crime then to go into your neighbor's ex uh, wireless network unless you you are invited in. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I think if we got 70,000 homes in the city, uh, then it will be... Uh, 
a job really to, to try then to organize all of this. Uh, at least 25, or at least 20 percent of any population will protest to anything. Right, but I mean, the way I see it, right, I mean, if the router, if the wireless piece of equipment hardware was accessible by the organization that is putting this together, then the organization could manage it with a like, like approval of whoever like, takes that into his home. Yes, but uh, we also had to consider that uh, that uh, there is no software available, as we knew of half a year ago, uh, that would be able, that would give uh, seamless roaming uh, over a number of different technical brands. What we can do today is to buy uh, buy uh, an area with one brand of uh, of equipment. We can manage roaming within that brand of equipment but but uh, then for a city of uh, of that size uh, no we gave it up we 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 we, uh, we believed that would be would be beyond our capabilities i mean the, the way i i'm sorry the way i see it like uh, the individual would actually get the equipment from your organization so everybody would have the same equipment, and they would pay for the equipment in exchange for getting the right to actually not have access in the city. Yeah, but we have a, have a much better much better model now, and that is that we will uh, offer this for free then to all of our students and uh, and so on as an extension of the campus network until we have developed services, which which uh, makes this economically feasible. Because it's quite clear that we can do things now for the first year, maybe two years, without having income to, to cover the expenses. But we can't do that for five years. I mean, we, we, uh, we need to develop a sustainable business model for this. So, so, so um, well, I mean, that was our decision. Um, it seems to me that if you let 30,000 students onto a, uh, if you let 30,000 students onto an open wireless network, um, all kinds of hell will break loose in terms of excess bandwidth usage. So how are you going to keep the network fair? Well, well, well I mean, I mean, we already have 30,000 students on our campus network. So, uh, or maybe not 30,000. We have, uh, we have uh, every week. We have 16, 17,000 uh, sort of active IP addresses, and not more than than 1,500 of those will be servers and things like that. So, so we are already in that situation. So, so this doesn't make uh, make uh, very much of a change. Yeah, so, so you don't have any trouble with uh, excess usage by small numbers of users. Of course, we have. I mean, uh, uh, also all of the dorms have have uh, broadband. Uh, not wireless, though, but broadband. And of course, some of some of the students there are uh, are sort of uh, plaguing the uh, the uh, the rest of the population by downloading masses and masses and masses. And and okay, they get the word that uh, behave, or you're kicked out. So 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 I think this is uh, this is manageable. This is manageable. Pe pe people are generally uh, very sensible if uh, they are given the chance to, to be so. Okay. If there is nothing more, then, then thank you very much for listening.